Hello teachers, I'm Dr. Abstract, and I'd like to take you through the Zim Kids site for helping kids learn to code. Here are a set of tutorials on the front, and the tutorials have three parts. Let's press on them. So level one, level two is something a little bit more, and level three is something more again. So uh, you can see the code for each of those levels by going code. And the idea is the kids will type over here the code and then do a test such as do circle dot center dot drag like so. And well, put the semicolon on there in the end and hit test. And now we have a circle that we can drag there's the code. There's also info on each and the info describes things a bit more. So you might want to read that info. It's for you, the teacher, but it's also for the kids if they want to read a little bit more than just see the instructions and the code. We also have a magic section which is available here and spells right in here that will tell us about all of the commands that were used. There's the rectangle, so here are the parameters for the rectangle. The magic section just helps you with things like display objects to tell you what they're like. Those are also available here under magic where it opens up into its own window there. Whee! <laughs> okay, the different parts of the statements, parameters, and animation. It's nice that we animate right early on because kids like animation. We all do. <laughs> All right, so we treat uh, this is like magic and we have spells. So a big list of spells and magic. And I think that helps with the kids as well. Let's go to the teach section now and see uh, what else we've got here. Zim Kids is really part of the overall Zim site. So back here, if you press here, that goes to the Zim site right here. May as well take a look. So this is Zim for the rest of the world and has uh, various features of what we can do, CSS like style, animations, and down here are the different types of things that we can make. As you can see here, e learning apps is one of those. So Zim is great for making e-learning apps. It follows in the tradition of Flash and follows in the tradition of Director before that. So we've been doing this for a long time. We've honed it and made it very, very easy. And like I said, very colorful as well. Okay, so let's uh, pop on up here, go back. Uh, down here at the bottom, so down here in the gold bars is Zim School and Zim Kids right there. All right, so that's how the rest of the world would find kids, but you'll go there directly with the kids. Uh, we've kind of kept this whole Zim a little bit separate. Here's the learn section, by the way, in Zim and it shows you we, we do have an editor that is very similar to the kids editor they've been developed both at the same time we'll, sh we'll come back to that editor in just a bit because we have some some goodies for you being teachers so there's information about the canvas being very colorful this is javascript it's industry standard javascript that we're using and then here's a bunch of videos uh, some of those were were back on the page that, that we were at right here um, with the creative coding lessons. So you're welcome to take a look at that and learn yourself about how to code uh, with creative coding. You'll be fine just going through the tutorials, but if you want, there's more resources there. Um, here's CodePen, it's got creative tutorial lesson, and then we're back to ZimKit. So there's more learning things here. I teach at Sheridan. Um, well, let's see, but I've been teaching kids as well for a long time and more tutorials, etc. All right, so coming up, let's go back to the Zim Kids now. That's school, and here's kids. So we're back in Zim Kids. Generally, the kids will all just stay here. The only way out to Zim is through the little cat, but um, you've got all, all that you want right here. Back in the teach section, then. So that's this section right here that we just sort of went through. Um, there's an online editor. Did we peek at the editor yet? I think we did, just a little bit. I could show you a little bit more around that. For instance, how to use Slate to get the backings in there. So why don't we, we'll go and do that later once we just scroll down through here. Here are the badges. So badges, uh, we haven't told the kids how to make 
those things for the badges. So they would practice with the tutorial, and then if they want to see if they can make some of these things, they can try. We give them hints. Here are the answers for the badges. So I mentioned that we would see the Zim Editor. Here are the, the badges in the Zim Editor. So for instance, uh, making art, there's what the art looks like. We can go to the code, and this is the code that was used to make the art. In the, in the sort of real world of coding, we use these shortcuts, F, S, W, and H for frame, stage, stage width, and stage height. In the Zim Kids, we often use uh, the word frame. I can't edit there, but I have to bring it over here. We can also use the word frame like that, and it will still work. Okay, and that's a test. So that's your way of, of getting to the answers to that, if, um, if you so desire. Back here then, uh, these are the badges. So the kids would take a look at, at, at the badges and choose, oh, I wanna make this game with the doors. And then here are some hints on how uh, those can be made. All right, so it just depends on age group. They might, or they may or may not be able to do that. I'm not sure. Um, but hopefully after some studying, they will along with those hints. So that's badges. We did, by the way, so back over here in the teach, provide images of those badges if you so desire. So if you really do need to give them a badge, you can print that or, or whatever you need to do. So um, there's also information on how we match curriculum. This is an example with the Ontario math curriculum where they've broken down all of the grades into these words and they keep on just sort of adding words. We did break down our steps into what we figured were matching that so our basics um, match that however I wouldn't I wouldn't teach grade ones with only variables or sequence you know you need to work with all of these together I believe so my recommendation is we teach the first level of each tutorials as soon as possible rather than saying oh let's go deep into all of the tutorial one in grade one <laughs> um, because coding works better with uh, all the parts basically. Patterns are more efficient with loops. Loops are better with arrays. Objects we learn from the start, so don't wait. Uh, we need events for interactivity. There's no logic without conditionals. And beauty comes from the code working together. So here's what the breakdown is. So here are all the parts right there. And this is what um, the curriculum is saying that we should be teaching these, these things. However, we've also provided bugs and things. And so bugs and things use holistically, use all of these things together. And I think you'll find that that's more successful. Um, well, that's up to you. Each, each of them, all of these have three levels. So you could just teach the first levels if you wanted to. Um, but I think that you'll be able to move on to higher levels as well without too much of a problem. All right, here's referrals. This is from Coder Dojo, for instance, and here's Dr. Yeston Jones, who's been an educator and the founder of eChalk. They're a large uh, British, they make um, e-learning apps for kids and teach kids to code. So in a nutshell, and they, they build with Zim. In a nutshell, Zim Kids is the most visual and rewarding way to introduce children to coding. It's never been easier to create beautiful interactivity with so little code. And I, I think that that <laughs> sort of stands on its own there. This is the canvas. I've been doing this for years. I'm a Canadian New Media Awards Educator of the Year. Uh, I know I've, I've worked in Director making CD-ROMs. I worked in Flash making um, web games and apps. Uh, and, and now we're doing the same on the canvas. Much of this is based on our learning throughout all that to make interactive media. Interactive media is so colorful, so beautiful. It's an amazing way to learn to, to, to work with code. Like I said, it's industry standard. So um, that's great. This has been a first part on how to teach Zim kids. Uh, why don't we have a second part that talks about how we can make scenes or apps in Slate and use these backings and bring in your own files. If you have any questions on all of this, uh, you're welcome to come in. Let's see, in the curriculum right down at the bottom, there's a link to 
the Slack channel. That's probably the best place to talk to us. So uh, we'd be happy to help um, make Zim match your curriculum or if you have any questions about how to code with Zim. So we will see you in the second part and all the best uh, teaching Zim to kids. Cheers.